what is going on ladies and gentlemen today we are getting into the nine terms every crypto trader should know welcome back to bitcoin daily guys i am jay please if you haven't yet please hit that subscribe that follow button smash it make sure to also drop a comment let us know how we're doing and what you think if you have any ideas for any content for us because we're always looking for ideas drop it below man and uh yeah that's pretty much appreciate it let's jump right into it guys so today we're speaking about the nine terms every crypto trader should know all right so let's jump right into this how do i progress to my next slide all right bro that's enough there you go there we go I, I put some fancy new uh video in it and then uh didn't know how to make it work <laughs> all right so the introduction guys whether you're in the stock market day trading i don't know what why it says oh my god there uh for x or new to cryptocurrency you'll hear a lot of trading terms that may sound unfamiliar fomo roi ath hodl what do these all mean Trading and investment have their own language and it could be daunting to learn all of these new terms. However, they can be quite useful if you want to keep up with what's going on in the financial markets. In this video, we've compiled some of the most important trading terms that you should know if you're trading crypto currency, which of course you probably are if you're watching this video. So the first one, FUD, FUD, F-U-D. FUD. That stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. All right, guys. FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So while not exclusively a trading term, FUD is often used in the context of the financial markets. This it's basically the spread of misinformation. The aim with FUD is to instill fear. When the market panics, then those that are spreading the FUD profit off a stock price decline caused by the potentially damaging news. In many cases, the information turns out to either be false or at the very least misleading. So you have to be very careful with FUD guys. Um, there's always a lot of fake news out there. So always be very careful. You'll notice a lot that the market will drop sometimes out of nowhere. Um, and then it'll just spike right back up. So that's usually a lot of uh, because of FUD. And it's usually because of fake FUD. Um, or something misleading. Um, that the market will have like a very fast reaction down. And then like they kind of figure out that it's fake or misleading or whatever. And then everybody just kind of buys back up. And you'll see the market just jump right back up. So that happens a lot guys. Just be careful with it. Um, FUD is what we call it. Um, and it stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt, okay? So, um, during this pandemic, there's been a lot of FUD, which, you know, there's been a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt because people don't really know what's going on with the whole COVID-19 situation. So, that's why it's, it's just been kind of dropping and then it'll go back up and then it'll drop and it'll go back up because it's just so much fake news out there. And reports about you know there's a virus there's no there, there's a, a vaccine there's no vaccine there's vac vaccine there's no vaccine back and forth and that's just it's been moving the markets every time that a new story pops up so um, definitely something that you will hear a lot in this industry the next one we have is FOMO FOMO stands for fear of missing out and I'm sure all of you all of us me included have at some point one point or the other experienced FOMO we have definitely experienced it so FOMO is the emotion that investors feel when they flock to buy an asset in fear of missing out on the profit opportunity as there are heavy emotions involved FOMO by a large number of people can lead to a parabolic price movements aka it happened in Bitcoin in 2017 um, when emotions are rampant, many investors may jump into positions out of FOMO. This can lead to extended moves in both directions and may trap many many traders who try to counter trade the crowd. So, 
Um, FOMO is the fear of missing out. Um, I know I, I and I get a lot of messages from you guys, uh, especially people in my trading group when they miss a trade or something when they miss an entry a trade entry or whatever guys there's always another trade entry you just have to be patient don't just jump into a trade just to be in a trade because you're fomoing all right there ha there's 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 a uh method to everything including trading so you have to if you're gonna invest your hard-earned money into something you need to be sure that you're entering at the right time you know what I mean and um, if you just enter out of FOMO you you almost always end up losing money more than not you might you might make some money but a lot of times you'll end up losing money because you don't really know what you're doing so FOMO is a big one um, and that that not only happens with Bitcoin and not just cryptocurrencies it just happens in anything or anything that has to do with investing uh people FOMO all the time uh fear of missing out and they'll just jump in without doing their research without doing their due diligence and end up losing money unfortunately um the next term hodl this is a very popular term um used very widely if you don't know it by now you, then you must be new because this is used all the time so HODL is a term that's derived from a misspelling of hold. It's basically the cryptocurrency equivalent of the buy and hold strategy. HODL originally appeared in a now famous post on the Bitcoin talk forum in 2013. The term was a spelling mistake in the title. I am HODLing. So I, I put the, the screenshot of the original post right here, guys. So if you guys want to zoom into this and take a look at it, um, you'll see this post was on December. I can't tell the date. December something <laughs> 2013. At, it looks like 10 a.m. or 12 a.m. I'm not sure. And it and it looks like he said, I typed D that title twice because I knew it was wrong the first time. Still wrong. Whatever. Girlfriend's out at a lesbian bar. Bitcoin crashing. Why am I holding? I'll tell you why. It's because I'm a bad trader and I know I'm a bad trader. Yeah, you good traders can spot the highs and the lows. Pit, pat, pity, wing, wong, wang, <laughs> just like that and make a million bucks. Sure, no problem, bro. Likewise, the weak hands are the, oh no, it's going down. I'm going to sell. He, he, he. And then they're like, oh God, my asshole when the smart traders who know what the fuck they're doing buy back in but you know what i'm not part of that group when the traders buy back in i'm already part of the market capital so guess who you're cheating day traders not me uh those taunt threads saying oh you should have sold yeah no shit no shit i should have sold i should have sold moments before every sell and bought moments before every buy but you know what? Not everybody is as cool as you. You only sell in a bear market if you are a good a good day trader or an, a, an illusional noob. <laughs> the people in between hold. In a zero sum game such as this, traders can only take your money if you sell. So that was very interesting. And I, ha I had to lean in because I could barely read it. It's very small. But, um, but apparently this guy was drunk. So this is probably 12 a.m. This guy was drunk on December, mid-December 2013. Um, he says here he had some whiskey. And he was just kind of ranting about holding. Or uh, hodling as it's termed now, as it's coined now. Um, so thank you. What's his name? Game Kay Kayubi. Thank you for this amazingness. I bet you didn't think it would go this viral and become part of cryptocurrency. Hodling refers to holding onto investments despite price drops. The hodling strategy is similar to the buy and hold investment strategy coming from the traditional markets. Buy and hold investors try to find undervalued assets and hold on to them for a long time. Many investors adopt, adopt this strategy for Bitcoin. If you watch, if you've watched our dollar cost averaging video, make sure to watch it, guys. It's on our page. 
you know that this would have been highly profitable strategy for Bitcoin. If you bought just $10 of, of Bitcoin every week for the last five years, you'd be up more than seven times your original investment, guys. Next term, return on investment, aka ROI. Very important term, guys. Return on investment is a way to measure an investment's performance. ROI measures the returns of an of an investment relative to the original cost. It's also a convenient way to compare the performance of different investments. Here's how you calculate ROI. You take the current value of the investment and subtract the original cost of the investment. Then you divide that number by the original cost. So ROI equals current value minus original cost divided by original cost. Let's say you bought Bitcoin at 6,000, then the price of Bitcoin went up to 8,000. ROI equals 8,000 minus 6,000 divided by 6,000. And that gives you an ROI of 0.33 or 33%. This means that you're 33% up from your original investment. It's also worth taking into account the fees or interest rate that you have to pay to get a more accurate picture. So that is a breakdown of ROI, guys. Um, return on investment. This is the formula right here of how you figure out exactly what your return on investment is so make sure to note this take this note note it down and learn how to do this because this is ideal and imperative to investing next term all-time highs aka ATH you'll, you'll see this written a lot I probably don't have to explain this one do I the all-time high is the highest recorded price of an asset. For example, the all-time high of Bitcoin during 2017 bull market was $19,798.86 USDT on the BTC slash USDT pair on Binance. This means that this was the highest price that Bitcoin was traded for on this market pair. Now on the other, on the opposite side of the spectrum is ATL or the all-time low. The opposite of ATH is all-time low, aka ATL. No, not Atlanta, all-time low. It is the lowest price of an asset. Breaking an all-time low on an asset can lead to a similar effect as when breaking the all-time high, but in the opposite direction. Many stop orders may trigger when the previous all-time low is breached, leading to a sharp move down. So you got to be careful with all-time highs and all-time lows. All-time highs can usually trigger uh, run-ups. You know where it'll it'll um, go even higher if it breaks it if it breaches it and an all time then in the same aspect uh, all time low if it breaks an all time low it'll run down more you know very this is a, a very important one guys do your own research aka D Y O R what what is this little thing over here I don't I don't know what this is. <laughs> They make it disappear. Look, there's another one right here. What is this? I don't know what that is. All right. I wanted to move my face out the way. There we go. I'm gonna put my face down here. All right. Uh, D Y O R. Do your own research. When it comes to the financial markets, do your own research is a term closely related to fundamental analysis it means that investors should do their own research into their investments and not rely on others to do it for them don't trust verify is a commonly used phrase in the cryptocurrency markets with similar meaning the most successful investors will do their own research and come to their own conclusions as such anyone who wants to be successful in the mark in the financial markets will have to come up with their own unique trading strategy this may also lead to disagreements be between different investors which is completely it's a completely natural part of, in of investment and trading an investor may be bullish on an asset while another may be bearish different opinions can accommodate for different strategies and successful traders and investors will have wildly different strategies the main idea is that they all did their own research came to their own conclusions and made their investment decisions based on those conclusions guys so important do your own research d y o r um it is imperative uh to be able to do your own research um trying to get this out the way um it is so important to do your own research guys um 
don't just blindly follow anyone even people in my trade group I tell them don't just blindly follow me um, any anyone that's uh, watches the videos and and our trade setups and ideas don't just blindly follow them look at what we're talking about pay attention to it and and understand the reasoning behind why we're saying certain things and looking at certain zones and levels and setups um, and then come to your own conclusion based on th that information that you've taken in and don't just get information from one place I always recommend getting information from different places as well and then kind of coming coming you know coming up with your own conclusion and your own uh, ideas and opinions based on that uh, due diligence DD due diligence is somewhat related to DYOR when investors are scouting for potential investments they need to do their own due diligence on the project to ensure that they can take into account all risk otherwise they won't be in control of their investment decisions and may end up making the wrong choices this goes hand in hand with with do your own research guys always do always do due diligence on any investments you're about to make um, KYC very important especially lately um, know your customer know your client that's what KYC stands for um, stock is stock exchanges and trading platforms have to comply with national and international guidelines for example the new york stock exchange and the nasdaq have to comply with regulations set by the united states government kyc guidelines ensure that institutions facilitating the trading of financial instrument verify their customers identity why is this important the main reason behind it is to minimize the risk of money laundering so kyc is all about mostly about money laundry I'm not gonna say it all in addition KYC regulations aren't only valid for participants of the financial industry many other segments also have to comply with these guidelines KYC guidelines are generally a piece of a much broader anti money laundering policy and that's basically it guys that was the last one uh, closing thoughts cryptocurrency trading terms can be a bit confusing at first but now you know a good chunk of them so you can feel more comfortable with all of these abbreviations make sure to dyor on fud on fud and not blindly fomo into a coin that has reached ath keep hodling hope you guys enjoyed that um try to make this as quick as possible get these in there um for all all of you that don't, that aren't familiar with these terms um i hope this helps i hope i hope this helps somebody um again guys please Hit that subscribe, that follow button, and hit that like. It helps us a ton. We're trying to spread this knowledge. We're, we're spreading this for free. You don't have to pay nothing to us for this, uh, and we're still doing it every single day. Um, it costs zero dollars to follow us, zero dollars to give us a like, and zero dollars to drop a comment. Just sharing your 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 opinion and you know whatever else you want to say. Just saying hi. Um, and it helps us in the long in the long run to continue to build and grow our channel and continue to build and grow um, the community the Bitcoin community overall and continue to build and grow this knowledge so thank you guys for watching if you did stay to the end I appreciate you guys so much thank you peace and love